That over there looks looks beautiful, looks good. Okay, pi, a number that many thought that was used in geometry, and but it is used in geometry, finding areas of circles, finding circumference, can also be a number that can be expressed in something as beautiful as that. As in it's the, the, the numbers at the top, the numerators goes from two, two, four, four, six, six, eight, eight, even numbers, and the ones at the bottom are odd numbers. And if you multiply them, you take the product as n tends towards infinity, you get pi divided by 2. Now the man that's credited for work of this caliber was, or his name is John Wallace, okay? And in 1656 in America, and I believe he's American, he was the one that found this out. So as part of the miscellaneous section of God's in math, let's pay tribute to this guy's work and show Wallace's product, okay? It's called Wallace's product founded by or discovered by John Wallace. Pi divided by 2 equals to that. Okay, now this product, okay, I must say, and again I say it's, it's a nice, beautiful product, okay, it's, it's no easy feat to show, okay, and there are three steps to proving it, okay, and if you could guess it, we're gonna use amazingly enough calculus and the integral sign to show something like that. Now the first step is establishing the recursive formula. There's a recursive formula that we need to use, I guess, is to attribute it to the, to the recursiveness or the sum to infinity. And after that, once we establish the recursive formula, we're going to have to use the recursive formula, okay, to, to really kind of develop the product. And after that, we take the limit as n towards infinity because we got an infinite product. Okay, so this is a three-part video and I hope that we can dive right into it. Okay. First, establishing the recursive formula, the recursive formula that we want to show is that the integrates of sine to the power of nx dx is equals to minus 1n got uh, let me sorry, let me check, I believe it's a yeah, sine sine n minus 1x cosine x okay and plus n minus 1 over n integrate of sine Okay, n minus 2x dx. Okay, that's the recursive formula we want to show. Not so sure many can see that, but just check out the page. Now, we need to show that recursive formula. So, what we're going to do is that we're going to let i n, the integral, okay, be integrate of sine n x dx. Okay, a good revision of your integral calculus. Now, what I'm going to do is that I can, in a way, rewrite this. Because what, I want, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the product formula or integration by parts. Okay, I'm going to write integrate sine n minus 1 sin x sine x dx. Okay, I hope you can see that they're equivalent because n minus 1 plus 1 gives me sine to the power of n x again. Okay, this is still i n. And because of that, what I can do is that I can integrate, okay, and then I can differentiate this, or I can think of something that when I differentiate, I get sine x. In this case, it's cosine x there. Not a problem at all, okay? So this one, and you differentiate this, you get sine x, okay? So now, integration by parts, what I do, these two comes over here, then I would minus integrate, this one goes over there, sorry, this one goes over here, and I have to differentiate this, okay? So I would get, bringing the two parts down, okay, sine and take away one x, bringing that one down will be a minus cosine x, take away integrate, okay? I will keep this one, so I'll change it to a plus because it's minus cosine, cosine x goes here, and then this one will go down here, but I need to differentiate that first because you see, I've already differentiated this part, now I need to differentiate this part to go at the other side of the integral sine, okay? n minus 1, sine x, n minus 2, okay, because 2 minus 1 minus 1, because our target is n minus 2 over there, x, okay, and we still need to differentiate the inside, which is cosine x, sorry, okay, sine n minus 2x and uh, cosine x, okay, dx there. Wow, that's quite a lot of working, but it's good as a revision of calculus, or integral calculus. Let me just check. Okay, it seems correct to me. Okay, so now, this one I can leave it as it is because I got the part over here. However, if you notice over there, we seem to have like divide by n somewhere over there. Well, I must say that that can be easily achieved because let's look at this part over here. Now, notice that there's a cosine x here and there's a cosine x here. So I'll put a cosine squared over here. Okay, and what do we know about cosine squared? Well, cosine squared can be, I mean, there's an identity to, trans trans to translate cosine squared to a sine squared. 
And we all know that sine squared plus cosine squared equals to 1, so cosine squared will be equal to 1 minus sine squared. Okay, that is not a problem at all. So we can just let's just rewrite this, rearranging this minus cosine x sine n minus 1x. Okay, so I will have a plus, I'll put the integrate sine. Okay, I will, I will rewrite this into 1 minus sine squared x. Okay, then we've got n minus 1 and we've got sine n take away 2x dx. Okay, not almost, almost there, but not quite. Okay, because I need to somehow change this to this over here. Well, what we started out with? We started out with sine to the power of n. What do we know? We can get the sine to the power of n somewhere over here. How do I know that? Because it's an n minus 2 and there's a 2. You times the 2 together, you get sine n, and then I bring the sine n over to the other side. Okay? I, I know I may be talking a bit fast, but then when I'm learning all this, everything came, you know, second nature to me. I can only look at that and I say that, okay, we need a sine n from here so that we can bring the other side, bring over the other side, and then we can divide through by n. Okay? So just look at this. We, this one over here, okay, we'll keep this, we'll multiply this inside here. And we'll multiply this one inside here. Okay? So I hope you see that. Okay? And I hope that you can see this now. Okay? So minus cosine x sine n minus 1x. Okay? Now, this one, okay, remember I'm gonna multiply the n minus 1 sine to the power of n minus 2 into the bracket here. So this is plus, okay? And then I will have the integrate, and this one will go over the 1. So I will just simply get n minus 1 sine and take away 2x dx okay and then this one's gonna go over here okay but be careful a bit because it's a minus okay and i will still retain the n minus one so i will have a minus and integrate the n minus one will still be retained because i'm bringing this product but the n minus two multiplied by the sine squared would be sorry the sine to the power of n minus two multiplied by the sine squared will give me sine n okay sine n x dx Okay, there we go. So this one is checked. This one is checked. Now it's only this part. But what do you know about that? Well, that is equals to I n that we started out with. So if we were to bring that over to the other side, we would have I n. Okay, then this will be a minus n minus n I n, right? So we bring over it will be a plus n I n. This is a plus. I n, we bring over the other side will be a minus, okay? So it will be a minus I n here, okay? And this is equals to, okay, this one over here, right? Minus cosine x sine n minus 1 x, okay? And then we're left with this integral over here, which we could just simply write as n minus 1 integrate sine and take away 2x dx, okay? Just to cut it short a bit. However, what we have over here, well, this one is simply i n minus i n, so this would be left with n i n, okay? Yeah, n times i, as in the integral, okay? n times the integral n, okay? And then I can just simply bring the n over the other side, and I would get minus one divided by n, n minus one divided by n, and this is equal to that over there. There we go. We have found or we have shown the reduction formula. Okay. Um, let's simplify it a bit. Okay. So that we, it has convenience when we want to use it. Okay. I'm going to do that by first putting the limit. Now, how he chose the limit, how John Wallace chose the limit, I'm not too sure, but I can explain it a bit. What he did was he, he let i n, knowing that now i n is, is equal to this, he integrate 0 pi over 2, and then, yeah, he did this and put a sign n x dx over here. This was the limits that he chose, 0 to pi over 2. Now, I can suspect why he did it because firstly, he needs the pi over, pi over 2 to come out, you know, somehow, right? Because the product gets a pi over 2 inside. That's why he needs the pi over 2 there, inside there. Now, the other reason why he chose it because of this thing over here. You see, you want to eliminate the, the non-integral or the, how do I say it, the, the evaluated integral. This integrator, integral is already evaluated. So if you let pi over 2 put inside the cosine x, you get 0. If you let 0, you put inside the sine x, you also get 0. So he needed to choose two limits that eliminated this, courtesy of the sine x and courtesy of the cosine x. And that is pi and 0. So what do we get? Well, as I explained to you, this one will become 0, correct? 
so he would get simply a n minus 1 divided by n and a i n take away 2 and this is i n over here and this is the key reduction formula in proving Wallace product